Welcome to the Day at Indy and the Marshall Pro Podcast, presented by Cooper Tires, and supported this month by Bell Racing Helmets USA. Sage Karam, you have been pretty darn quick like a bunny through mm -hmm. two days of practice, but having been trackside, having watched some very fast hands at work, while we've seen some pretty good speeds, would I be safe in saying... This has not been easy behind the wheel trying to keep this car going around the corners instead of coming to a halt. Yeah, no, um, I mean, you know, DRR boys have done a great job. It's great having a teammate with JR. Um, you know, first off, that's just awesome, being able to bounce ideas off somebody. Um, I haven't had that luxury, so, um, no, that's been good. You know, car's been, car's been fast. I was six yesterday, ten today, so, um, you know, couldn't have been happier with the speed. Uh yeah, I mean, the car running on its own um, in clean air, like, you know, we haven't really done too much qualifying trim stuff yet, um, like totally trimmed out. Um, but from what I've run with clean air and everything, the car's pretty stable. It's pretty it's pretty nice to drive. I mean, you don't really have any issues. But, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Uh, the the new aero kits or, or whatever, um, whatever else is new, you know, with the car is just making it pretty difficult Um to run in traffic. Uh, that's, that's one of the things that Robin and I heard a lot about today from drivers talking about, yes, you can get that monster tow, but once you get up to the car that you're chasing, it's not as if it's a really easy slingshot. Is there almost a wall of air you think you hit? Or It's, it's um, I mean, you, you can, I mean, the, the laps that you're seeing at like 226, 225, even me at 224, you know, it's, it's drafts that are starting back 15 car lengths. Wow. And, um, you know, you're sucking up, sucking up, sucking up. You know, the guys that are 227, 226, you know, they're they're flat all four corners. The guys that are 225, 224, you know, there's a, there's a lift in there for sure. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it, it you got to time it right. It's These cars suck up to each other incredibly well, um, and they move in a straight line. I mean, you're, you're, you're mid-230s, you know, going into a turn one or turn three. Um, so, I mean, they're definitely moving, and that's that's – that's, I think that's a lot quicker than it was last year before we had the extra boost. Um, but then it's weird, man. Like, you, you can you feel good at, like, 15 car lengths, and then all of a sudden you get to, like, 10 car lengths, and you already start to feel the front start to wash. And then those guys that, like, can keep their foot in it because they have a lot of confidence that run 226, they keep their foot in it, but it's probably not feeling very pretty on the mm. front end of the car. Um, and then right when you get to, like, five car lengths, you just kind of hit a wall. Wow. Uh, um, it, 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 a lot of... Uh, push happens you know the front it you know i think without not having the downforce um it's it's just hard lose the front end and it's just hard to keep it underneath you um i mean there were a lot of times today where i i was very very nervous that uh i, I thought was, i heard you going by i thought i heard prayers being said when you <laughs> by. There was, i was very nervous coming out of turn four um when i was running in traffic nearly every single lap because it's just the car doesn't really turn all that well um in traffic right now but you know the thing i'm not worried about is that it doesn't? It doesn't seem like it's just me. Like yeah. it seems like it's it, a lot of people out there are not being able to pass, and they're they're having trouble with with getting that little that extra bit of closing in the middle of the corner. So like I don't feel like I'm on an island all alone having this issue. Um, it seems like it's everybody, and um, you know. So I, I think qualifying is going to be super important. I think pit stops are going to be super important. But at the same time, it's still only day two. So um, you know, hopefully from now until race day you find some stuff that works and the interesting thing though is by losing monday which we've had in the past right so essentially we have one more day of practice normal practice if you want to call it that before we go to high boost on friday so the working at least for what we can do this week a little bit interesting a little bit less track time there does that impact your run plan, your run schedule at all, knowing that we do have this one less day, or not so much? Not so much. Um, for me, you know, my my months actually goes a lot quicker this month, just having an extra teammate. You mm. know, I mean, just having one one more guy to go off of, because you know, before it was always me. You know, one day I'm you know mainly focusing on like springs, and then the next day I'd come in, I'm doing arrow and qual sims and stuff. And then the next day it's like you know, then you're working other mechanical stuff. Now it's like Jr. can go out do something. I can go out do something. We, you know, two birds one stone, and then come together with a setup. And it, so for me, it, it, I think the whole month for me is just going faster in general, like in a better way. Um, so 
no, I'm I'm okay, I'm okay with it. I mean, they give us an extra hour every every uh, day now to make up for the extra day, so it's all good. Fair enough. Today's podcast is supported by our friends at Bell Racing. If you're in town this month, stop by their brand new shop on Main Street here in Speedway, just right next to the track. They are synonymous with safety, innovation, performance, and engineering excellence. Bell is trusted by 19 of the 35 drivers who will be attempting to qualify this weekend. So stop in, get some merchandise, and check out their new facility. Sage, you have been in an interesting position where... This has been your IndyCar race of the year. Mm -hmm. Some of these guys have gotten to do either the GP or a couple other races. You're an Indy Lights champion. You're someone who has, obviously, IndyCar experience. But what is it like for you, on a personal level, not getting a chance to keep those IndyCar skills sharpened constantly when you come into May? What's it like having to be instantly awesome Do you give yourself any grace period to kind of work your way back into feeling everything the car's telling you? What's that process like? Yeah, um, I mean, for me, I had the the refresher. Um, That helped out. Sure, sure. I I, I think, well, I don't think, I know. Like, if I were to come back and I didn't have the refresher, I still wouldn't be flat straight out of the box. Um, So I'd probably still be doing a couple of laps of, like, you know, 210, 215 anyway, just to get my feet back under me. but I don't know. This year, I felt I felt much better. Uh, I I came in and um, I was f- I was flat right after I, you know, I I got through the little phase of two ten to two fifteen. I was flat right away. I felt really comfortable. I, it felt like really natural to me. Mm. Um, I was, uh, and then I left that day thinking like this was the best I've ever felt leaving day one back in an Indy car like ever and. It was actually the best I've ever felt at the Speedway, to be honest with you. And I, I don't know if, if that's um, – yeah, I've been taking, like, the off season this year, like, really serious. And um, I read one of the press releases talking about it more serious, more mature. And I'm yeah. like, he's never been immature. He's just – he's been his age. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, yeah, I've been just young, and, you know, this is my fifth time. And I just know, like, you know, this race can really make your career. And um, I'm trying to just do everything right and have – do everything I can to get the right karma and uh yeah I don't know I'm just I'm just really trying to you know turn things around and because this is where I want to be you know I dip my foot my foot in IMSA and and everything and that that was that was that was great I had fun but you know I I think I'm I'll push that aside right for right now and I want to you know I want to put all my eggs in this basket of becoming a full-time IndyCar driver again and um doing this for a long time because I I honestly believe that's where I belong um but yeah, you know, I had some, I had shoulder surgery like not too long ago, and I had to get through that, and then. And you are a a zero body fat percent kind of guy right about now. Talking to a hundred percent body fat guy, but <laughs> as yeah, Robin no, Miller I, laughs I've, at me um, without mercy. I'm twenty pounds down since last Indy 500. So I hate you. I'm just it, saying. So, so I'm weighing 150 now. I was 170 last Indy 500. Um, but I feel great. I I, got, I I really do. I feel great. Uh, my mind's in the right spot. It's in the best place it's ever been uh, coming to this 500. So I'm thinking it's all up this month. I think I'm going to have a good month. And, uh, yeah, just got to just gotta keep it together, keep it clean, keep my head in the race, which I, I know I can. I was doing that last year. Uh, just be patient. And we'll be good. I like that Jaron Reinbold Racing has two kind of holistic – peaceful cats as their driver lineup there's no raging a-hole there's no, you know there's no raging ego just i like yeah. that let's talk about the team a little bit so dry and Reinbold racing they've had a long association with chevrolet how would you say the chevy input along with the quality crew and engineers and such that dennis has put together how would you say they have worked to allow you guys to come out and you specifically to be pretty darn quick right out of the box right hey in the only team it's going to take them a few days to warm up no not yeah, at all i mean i seen i saw like a tweet that really kind of ticked me off like not too long ago about how somebody's somebody said something about dryer and reinbold like being like washed up or something like that like just like the team like just being a one-off team and they they're we're not going to be able to come in and be able to compete with penske and ganassi and it's not going to be the same well that's totally false um this team they keep the guys hired on all year long. They massage those cars for 365 days. So 
I guarantee you, you go look around in the paddock and you're not going to find a better car. It looks more prep than me and JR's cars. Um, I mean, Dennis is serious to get back into full time again. Um, the crew does practice pit stops every single day at the shop. And um, last year I made up, I made up five, five to six spots every pit stop last year in the race. Um, wow. And I don't think people realize that. So, I mean, um, if this race comes down to something like that where track position is key and, you know, pit stops are important, I'm not worried about that. I know i got a good crew behind me. Um, I'm hoping the pit stop competition this year we can do something because, <laughs> you know, I like to. A little bit of change. Yeah. I, I'm hoping that, uh, you know, they, they move it a little bit over to the right a little bit so there's no concrete involved because last year it was like the last couple of years. It's just left lane wins every single yeah, time. Yeah. So it's wide enough now, I think, where you can run two cars on the asphalt there. So we'll see. But. Um, yeah, I mean, the team's just great. I mean, it's, it's my fourth year with them. Um, and I have mostly every single person on that car. Mostly. I mean, maybe like 85% of them have have been with me for four years. So it just makes everything so smooth and everybody knows each other. It's more of a family at this, at this time, you know, rather than a team. I don't know if you and I have ever discussed this. Let let me ask one more question and then we'll jump into a couple of questions that uh, your fans sent in. (laughs) So we look at a guy like Joseph Newgarden, all-American, Chevy power, driving for Roger Penske. Uh, there are a few other drivers who we'd look at and say that's, you know, all-American package. I don't know if I hear that thrown around a lot for you, obviously. You know, all-American team with Dennis's, uh, Chevy power, obviously. Is that a drum you like to beat very much, or is that something you take pride in? Um, or are you yeah, joining I mean, Al-Qaeda I, tomorrow? Just one no. it's kind of an either one. <laughs> no. Um, I, yeah, I mean, I, obviously, I think, like, Team America is probably, like, is, is really, really cool. My friend just got deployed um, in the Army out in Afghanistan. So, you know, prayers out to my boy Logan. Um, I'll be carrying a, a Mer- or, um, an Army flag with me. Nice. Uh, in the race, on, in my suit. So if I win, I'll pull that out for victory um on my victory lap um but yeah no i i I think it's cool definitely being all american um but you know it's just a it's just a stat you know it's cool and everything but i think you know we just focus on you know the more important things and getting the cars ready and and everything um but yeah i mean and chevy's been great you know i mean having chevy i think last year i think honda had a real clear advantage um it's not there anymore it's not there anymore um i I think it's really really close this year um indycar you know with the restrictions we have in qualifying with the wing angles and stuff i think you're going to be seeing a really really close qualifying um this year and i mean hats off to chevy they worked really really hard since i mean obviously i wasn't there um through the off season and everything developing and seeing you know the steps but i know when i got my engine and for this you know i felt an immediate improvement and uh you know, hats off to them. Got a couple questions here that we will uh, close on, Sage. First one's a really, really good one from David Lighting. He says, why do so many cars run during happy hour versus running between noon and 3 p.m. when the actual race will take place? And that is that is a great question because yes. normally when we think of folks waiting to run in happy hour, it's solo running, right? Perfect conditions, get the car ready for qualifying. Instead, it's kind of turned into the daily toe battle. Why do you think it's because we can run a little bit faster, therefore it might replicate race pace? Why is this turned into a, a toe battle? Uh, I mean, I, I don't. I, I, my personal opinion, I think happy hour is like the track cools down and and everything, and I think it's like that's when you see somebody's going to go out, and they know there's like a lot of cars out on track and. They're, you know, since the track's going to be its best condition, they're going to go get their best toe lap and put up a big number, basically. Um, you know, I, Is there I, much value in towing no, around at that no, hour? I can't. No, I mean, I'm struggling no, to think of. There, there, there's no value in, like, putting up a number, um, I mean, throughout the whole day, really. I mean, it's it's all fake, you know, all the numbers. you got to look at no toe speed. Um, but, yeah, I mean, all these big numbers, like 227, 226, you know, 225, 224 even, I mean, they don't mean any – we couldn't run any of those without a little help. So um, you got to look at the no-toe speed to see who's really quick. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that is a good good point of, like, why don't you run when you're, like, in the heat of the day and race time? Um, and we do. I mean, I, I think there's other teams that have different programs. But I, at the same time, you know, I don't think – we've never even just said, like, well, this is when race is going to be, so we're going to go out there and try and run um, – 
race trim right now because in my program it's always been the whole day we're just going to run race trim and yeah. we're just going to get out there with cars and just run race trim and, and keep working things um but now with it being bumping there's another element it's not only about figuring out your race car you got to make sure your qualifying car yeah, is yeah. good too because you're not even guaranteed in yet so yeah we'll see a couple more quick questions before we let you get on your evening sage dustin in virginia asks will you retire if you win the indy 500 <laughs> i mean you're too young to retire right <laughs> Or could you hire Robin and I to be your manager? I was we just blow talking all your money, about but this. I was actually just talking about this in the garage. Um, Miller, he's already talking about this. Yeah. Oh, we're, oh, we're scared. I was joking about this. I said if I were to win the Indy 500, I think after my warm-up lap, I'd take my shoes off and put them out on the bricks and then head on over and uh, do my little victory celebrations and everything and, uh, you know, go take the prize money I won and run a business or something, then go enter in the NFL draft. God, I should have saved this one for last. That's the perfect <laughs> closing. Oh, you're killing me. I'm thinking me. slot receiver. You are a freaking gem, Sage <laughs> <laughs> You know, I've, you actually you aren't up here. We refer to you on a daily basis as Cage Serum, by the way, because years ago, Bob <laughs> Jenkins, in one of his many lovable uh, misquotes, referred to you as Cage Serum. There so you go. We, we've loved that ever since. <laughs> All right, one or two more. Drayton Knowles asks. Whose idea was it to paint the floors on the DRR cars because they look dang good? And I mentioned that earlier today. Those things look gorgeous. Yeah. No, um, I actually, it was weird. Um, I had a rendering of the car on my phone that they sent me, and they were originally black on the rendering. And then when I came for Rookie, uh, or not Rookie, but the refreshers, they were yellow. And uh, I saw they were painted, and that was, like, the one thing different from the rendering. So I don't know whose it was, but it looks cool. I, I like that it's more yellow than they, black. It, they should get a percentage of your winning prize money. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. No, we have a great painter, a great body fitter with Jake. He, he does a great job. All right. You got a couple questions on the similar theme. Do you know that they make shirts with sleeves? <laughs> Tim Up to Grove says, Sage, where's the strangest place where you've had no shirt? I don't know if you want to answer that or I not. I don't even know. Uh, let's see. We'll go with the last two here. James Balk asks, what are your plans for the rest of the year? Um, I think it all depends with how this goes, this race. Um, if I get through the month, no crash damage, and um, you know, finish well. I think if I can just get to the end of the race, I think like a top 10 is very, very reasonable. Um, and I want to just finish this year, and I want to finish top 10. And um, I think that would be a successful Indy 500 year for me. So if, we, if that happens, I think we'll have a lot of excitement in our camp, a lot of momentum, and hopefully we can go run some more races. Amen. All right. Last question is going to go to the one and only David. Uh, two questions. He asks, can the front wings be asymmetrically trimmed? That would be a no, David. That would be uh, all or nothing, yeah. meaning you're not adjusting them individually, one side only. Uh, and the question he asks that will close on Sage, what do you think will be the safe speed to make it in the show and not get bumped? Any predictions? I don't know. Um I mean, I don't know how I mean, much. 300 many, would be a safe number, but I don't think we're going to get there. Yeah, see, the weird thing is, is like, I just don't know if we've seen people fully trimmed out yet. Mm. Um, I mean, I'm not. I haven't even gone negative yet. Um, so, I mean, it, it's, there's still so much room to go. On Miller the, goes on negative the, every day, but that's a different <laughs> topic. <laughs> on the rear wings, I mean, yeah, there's there's room to go. Um I don't know, obviously, what some of those guys are, were doing. Um, I know a couple people ran no toes of like 223. That's pretty quick, I think, right now. Um, that's definitely trimmed out a little bit. Um, but I, I don't know where they are. I, since I haven't trimmed out yet, I don't really know exactly where we are before we're going to get the boost, so it's hard to say. But I do think the field's going to be, from top to bottom, a lot closer than it was last year. Um, so... It's going to be all in the preparation. It's going to be who prepped their cars the best to find that extra mile an hour. Um, that's going to be safe. And, and if I were to guess, I, man, I don't know. I, I think pole's going to be like 228 or something like that. Um, you know, I don't think you're going to be up over 230s like last year. Um, but I think you know you got to you got to be like 226, probably 225 by yourself. We're not going to hold you to that because we are still kind of guessing at this point. Yeah, I mean, I, I have no idea. That's just like a guess right now because I, I think by myself I've run, I can run two twenty, two twenty one, and you know, 
I trim out, maybe gain a couple mile an hour and then a couple more mile an hour with that. So that puts me at like 225, 226, and that's just how I see it. But, again, I have no idea. So. And on average, when we go to qualifying boost, we pick up about four and a half mile per hour. Yeah. So we'll see. So Yeah, so, we'll I mean, it, I think it all depends with – how many mile an hour you gain with trim? You know, if you say four mile an hour, then that puts me about 225, I'd say. And uh, then with trim, you know, whatever we can get out of that. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think qualifying is going to stay under 230. We could be 228s, 229s, but I think it's going to stay under 230 this year. But uh, you're going to see a much tighter, exciting qualifying. Amen. Cool. Sage Karen, thanks for joining us on the Day at India, the Marshall Pro Podcast. Presented by Cooper Tires and Bell Racing Helmets USA. Yep, thanks for having me, guys.